Hello YouTube and thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing and great. So I get the Samsung T7 Shield external SSD. I think most of you are running into storage issues and especially if you are using a Mac. So once you spec it from the beginning, you are stuck with it for life and it's actually stupid. So it only makes sense to upgrade to an external SSD from Samsung. This one has been a great choice. I did a lot of homework before buying obviously and seven months in, I just want to share my experience, my opinions and my thoughts. And it's been absolutely amazing, to be honest. Fast, reliable, and most important, loyal. So the one thing you don't want to happen to your SSD is to die out. I also want to show you how to set it up. Some issues you might run to, if, especially if you're using the Mac, the software might not be able to recognize the SSD in the first place. And also want to tell you that you need to format your SSD before using it to the Apple file system if you are using the Mac. I haven't done it. I was not aware about it and I actually still use this one, it works absolutely fine, but apparently this also increases the performance or the reading and writing speed of the SSD itself. This is rated at 1000 megabytes reading and writing speed. It is theoretical, so it is slightly decreases in real life, but yeah, so let's go through the unboxing and let's do an overview. The unboxing experience is pretty straightforward, in the box you will find the T7 Shield itself. USB-C to USB-C cable and USB-A to USB-C cable. I recommend you use these cables specifically because they support high transfer data speed and otherwise you basically choose something similar. The SSD itself, just like the name indicates it, is a shielded SSD and I was very surprised, impressed by the material. I thought this was plastic but it's actually rubbery and for the size it just fits in the palm of your hand. Very compact, very portable, so convenient, absolutely lightweight. For the dimensions, it is 88 by 59 millimeters and 13 millimeters of thickness and it comes in at around 100 grams of weight which is nothing it is also ip65 which is water resistant not waterproof i would definitely avoid submerging the ssd into the water and three meters drop resistance which i'm not going to demonstrate but i think Design and build quality are absolutely on point. It feels very stiff and so far so good for me at least. It feels very solid. I would say you don't have to worry about it like being beaten up a little bit. So yeah, there is a Type-C port which definitely doesn't support like water gear into it. So you have to keep that in mind. So the main reason or the main feature why you want to get a T7 sheet or any other fast SSD, right, is obviously the high data transfer speed. And this is solely enabled by the USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. This supports 10 gigabits per second or around 1200 megabytes per second. It is absolutely fast. This covers all of my tasks. My workflow is on another level, honestly. Of course, you, you combine it with a performing laptop that supports the 3.2 Gen 2 and you are good to go. If you are doing 4K video editing, which is for me the main task for the SSD, let's say 3D rendering, code compiling, this will take care of everything, honestly. But unless you do like 8K video editing or log footage in 8K, a crazy workflow maybe you want to have something like the new thunderbolt 5 which enables the 3.2 gen 2 by 2 so it's 20 gigabits per second data transfer speed and i think that is still on the market to be rolled out in the in the near future currently most devices support the 3.2 gen 2 which is fair enough honestly it makes everything so easier so make sure you have a device that supports it and i would like to show you also how i transfer my data from the iphone like all my videos that i shoot for this youtube channel to the SSD itself so that I don't have to go through the laptop. So as part of my workflow, after I shoot all of the videos on my iPhone, I will just select everything. Then, so I don't have to go through the laptop, I will just send them to the T7 Shield, save the files. Now you can see here, I don't have any external drive recognized. Now once I connect it, there you go. So. T7 shield, I will create a new file, new folder, sorry. I'm going to go to T7, save. Then simply tap on save and it, all of this, those videos were actually written on the spot. So everything was completely transferred. Usually longer videos will take a little bit more, but I think this will take not more than maybe 30 seconds or like at most one minute. 
So you see everything here is being transferred and they are quite beefy videos like 1.5, 1.7 gigabytes. Um, yeah, these ones a bit less. There you go, done. That was specifically get info that was 2174 gigabytes transferred in less than what 40 50 seconds now i have all my videos on the t7 shield i'll just go ahead plug it into my laptop and basically start editing right now to set up the ssd is very easy you just have to connect with the type c cable so as you can see here this is samsung t7 shield like software the file or the installing file will be included in the ssd so it's very easy very straightforward to install and you can see how much storage you have used how much you have left all the settings and you can just update it at first i think the first time you will be prompted to update the ssd which will not take like more than five minutes probably and also you can encrypt your ssd of course with a password you go to settings and you can enable the security mode you have here you can give it a name you can change it so yeah basically this is an overview of the tool you don't have to do much here there's actually not much to do besides like updating it and enabling the password i'm gonna check for an update i haven't seen an update for a long time let's see refresh i'm not sure if there is a new update but anyway for me it just working perfectly but i definitely recommend you set a password to protect your data very important especially if you are dealing with sensitive data so the idea here guys is if you have a macbook and maybe you didn't allow or enable these permissions before so you have a new laptop or anything basically if you plug in the t7 shield with USB-C. The T7 shield appears on the laptop, so it is connected and plugged in, but the software is not able to detect it. What you will have to do first is go to your settings, scroll down to privacy and security and security section. Now if you haven't allowed this before, you will see under the security section, the system software from developer Samsung Electronics was blocked from loading. So we are going to enable or allow this. You have the allow button, click on it. In this whole process, you will be prompted to enter your password and your ID multiple times. So just do it along the way. You will have to click restart. Once the laptop restarts, go back to your settings, scroll down to privacy and security and under the security section, you will see enable system extensions. So click on it. This window will pop up. So enable system extensions, you need to modify your security settings and the recovery environment, which means we need to shut down the laptop and launch the startup options of the Mac. So go ahead and click on shutdown, wait for the laptop to turn off and press and hold the touch ID of the Mac until you see this page. So guys, I'm going to re-simulate the fix for you. You have the D7 shield connected, so it's right here. And I'm going to shut down the laptop. Shut down. Yes. The laptop is shut down. I'm going to launch the startup options. Press and hold the touch ID. Just keep pressing until it appears. So continue holding for startup options. It will tell you already. Loading startup options. There you go. So now you have the Macintosh and you have the options. So you have this page basically. You go to options. Click on continue. So select a user know the password for so this is me i'm going to select my account next so now you'll have this window utilities go to startup security utility select the system you want to use to set the security policy okay this one then click on unlock so now i already have this enabled because i'm just trying to redo the fix for you guys but you will probably have full security enabled at first or you probably bought your laptop recently so you didn't enable this for any kind of developer so now you would have to select reduce security and enable the first option allow user management of kernel extensions from identified developers so you go ahead and click on ok you will be prompted to enter your password several times as you've seen during this process and you're gonna go ahead for you it's like okay i'm just gonna click ok and i'm gonna go ahead and close this window and for you you go back and click on restart so now you see here i have security and now you don't have the option to enable or to allow or to enable any extensions you will have allow applications from app store and known developers so next step is definitely go ahead and format your ssd to the apple file system 
this will make sure it is compatible and it will take advantage of all its performance if you do not do it just like i didn't do it it's not going to affect anything i think it, the ssd will still work just fine i didn't want to do it because i don't have an ssd and then you have to back up everything in a different one you have to erase this all the data here obviously because you're going to format it and then you're going to have to back up again but i'll probably do it at a later time but please make sure to do it before you start using the ssd that way you are good to go and you are pretty settled it's said to slightly increase the performance or take advantage of all of the ssd performance so this is what i read which brings us to the speed test so let's run a speed test let's see how it looks so let's start the write and reading speed So writing speed at around 872 and reading is probably around like 700 something. 680, yeah. So we have basically the 1000 megabyte reading and writing speed are kind of theoretical and in optimum conditions. Realistically, you'll get something close, but it is really unnoticeable. I never notice anything that could kind of compromise my workflow or something really annoying that I have. It pisses me off, to be honest. Even when I'm editing off of DaVinci Resolve, which I'll show you in a minute, the timeline, even if it's in 4K 60 or in 4K 30, it is so smooth. I don't have any issues. Occasionally, like rarely, it will lag just a little bit, kind of like lags maybe like for three, four seconds, and that's it. Even like the rendering 4K video speed, it is absolutely amazing. I would say this though, this external SSD and accessories, they come at a secondary consideration for you. If you are trying to invest, please invest in a great or very performant laptop. For me, I just went for the Mac. I'd invested all of my savings in a M2 Pro MacBook Pro and it is the 32 gigabytes of RAM. I just got the one two terabyte version. So I know I'm going to uh, extend the storage afterwards. That's not an issue, but all your workflow, of course, has to do with the performance of your laptops. And if you combine it with a fast SSD, absolutely amazing. So that's one to consider. So what I use the SSD for is obviously doing these 4K videos. I shoot everything in 4K, sometimes in log format or log files. And those take specifically like triple the space. And this one is two terabytes. Inevitably, I'm going to have to upgrade. I think I'm going to take by the one to ter four terabyte uh, version the next time. But this one has been very convenient. It helped me a lot. At least I don't stop, like I don't have to look for external space, have to delete everything. So before I buy the Samsung T7 Shield, I obviously consider other options like the SanDisk Pro, but I read that they have so many problems and the last thing you want is your SSD crashing while you are working or not even when you are working. It basically like next time you open it and it dies out out of nowhere. So that's absolutely unacceptable. The Samsung T7 Shield now seven months or eight months in, it's been holding great. I think kind of a safe choice and i'm really happy with the with the purchase that i made also i got the two terabytes for 149 dollars and you can get the one terabyte or four terabytes as well so they are available on amazon they are available everywhere since i will also be using the phone and the ssd on the go so try to shoot videos i also got a short usb-c high data transfer cable this one's from amazon for six bucks it does the job it just you, they have to make sure that it is a high data transfer speed this one is like 40 gigabits per second so you do get two high data transfer cables in the box usb-c to usb-c and usb-a to usb-c Make sure to always use high data transfer cables, obviously, to take advantage of the whole performance. I also wanted to show you this accessory. So this one you can mount on the back of your laptop if you are on the go. This one is from Sleep Drive. I don't know the brand, but it's a portable hard drive sleeve for laptops. So another accessory idea, which I am personally interested in, is 
sometimes when I shoot log format videos on the iPhone, it doesn't let me go no more than 15 minutes, so I am forced to stick the T7 sheet on the back of the phone. I ordered this cold shoe mount myself. It's from Never. It basically lets you mount your external drive on the back of the phone while you are shooting, and it writes the videos directly to the external storage, and you are good to go. It's a very convenient solution. Okay, people, so I hope I squeezed in all of the information that I have about the T7. At least I help you make an informed decision. This is a pure recommendation for me. I do a lot of homework before buying. I try to be reasonable with my purchases. So go ahead and let me know what you think. If you need any details or any questions or any doubts you have, make sure to leave them in the comments. I will make sure to reply to them. I'll see you next time. Peace.